YouTube, what is good? It's your man Ribs from Doing Film Things. Today, we're going to be looking at Fan Ho's photography. Fan Ho is probably one of the most famous street photographers of all time, and he documented Hong Kong in its heyday back in the 1950s, before all of the kind of city transformed into that financial global center that it is today. Fan Ho's super famous because of the techniques and the style of photography that he incorporated in his work. I personally would consider Fan Ho the first modern street photographer, given that a lot of the techniques that he basically pioneered are still in use right now and are just as popular as they were ever. So he basically paved the way for this entire thing we call street photography and really created that visual style that so many people try to replicate nowadays. So if you're a street photographer, there's four things you need to pay attention to and learn from Fan Ho's work in order to potentially make your work better. The first thing you need to learn from Fan Ho's work is that his choosing of the time of day really, really mattered. Street photography obviously can be done in all hours of the day, but Fan Ho's best work really centered around that late afternoon, early golden hour sun. And that's very important because that sunlight is very harsh and very strong. And he used it in a way that gave his images this beautiful glow and really elemental feel. He wasn't scared of harsh sunlight at all. And in fact, it seems like he thrived when harsh sunlight was available. Let's look at some samples. So images like this one are kind of a key example, a classic example of Fan Ho's work when it came to harsh sunlight. In this example, you see that beautiful golden light streaming through at kind of a 45 degree angle. And that's how you know it's probably golden light because this was probably shot during golden hour. And this image otherwise is not very special, at least I wouldn't consider it to be very special, but just a beautiful sight because of how well he captured the sunlight. And of course you see those big sun rays, which you won't always get when you're shooting into the sun, but he managed to capture it in a section here where the sun just created these beautiful lines and it streamed all over the subjects. If we look at some other examples here, you'll see in this one, for example, this one is one of his most famous images. And basically here we have the same exact thing going on. You've got beautiful late afternoon golden hour sunlight peeking through that entrance of the staircase and it's just radiating and really shining on its subjects. The angle of it is obviously very important because it allows it to come in at this very interesting point of view. And then if you look at the shadows, of course, that it casts, it creates this very interesting shadow from the subjects. So 45 degree golden hour light is very, very important here. And he just loves it. And you're gonna see it over and over again. This is another example here. And I think this is probably at the same exact station. I don't know, I can't confirm that, but it kind of looks like the one before. So he clearly really likes this time of day because it looks like this is the same station and the same angle of sunlight. And the sunlight at that time just comes at a really nice angle and it casts this really interesting light on the ground from its subjects. But it's also just a bit less harsh than let's say midday sun at around noon. Um, so that texture and quality of the light really changes how it appears on its subjects. And you just can't go wrong with that light. So if you think people are usually a bit too obsessed with that golden hour light, there's a reason why. And if you go out with, with black and white film to shoot, it's gonna look even more interesting because that light is gonna be very nice and soft while still having a nice kind of hard edge to it. It's kind of the best of both worlds, honestly. This is one last example here. And again, this is an image that probably wouldn't be as interesting if it wasn't those lighting conditions, but the harsh sunlight here really adds a whole dimension to it because you have this really beautiful shadow cast from the 45 degree sun from the signs on the building. And then of course this gentleman is backlit and that backlighting really provides this nice glow around his body. So just makes it that much more interesting. You could take very, very normal situations and with the right sunlight, you can transform them into something that's more majestic and more interesting. The next thing I wanna talk about is shadows. So we obviously just talked a lot about light and the quality of light. The opposite of that is obviously the shadow. Really strong sunlight is gonna cast really harsh shadows with really clear edges. And when you're at 45 degrees sunlight or perhaps even lower, as you get really, really close to the sunset, those shadows have to get longer and longer. And Fan Ho would love this. You can tell a lot of his images that he used that to his advantage in order to figure out where the most interesting shadows would be cast. So one of the things you'll see that he did a lot was use the shadow from an alleyway in order to really frame his images. So as you can see in this image here, you have this really nice almost vignette around the entire image. And that's natural. It may have been manipulated just a bit to make it even darker, but the point is that the fact that he's facing outwards from an alleyway instantly creates that vignette around the image. And then in the center of the image, you have the bright part, which is kind of where your eye is supposed to go. That shadow around the periphery of the image really guides your eye and makes it very clear to you as to what you should be looking at. This is a very classic technique, and this you can do basically anywhere, but the shadow is a very key component of this image. And it really makes this image that much more interesting. If we move on to some other examples, you'll start to see how he really kind of looks for very particular types of shadows. 
So this one right here is probably his most famous image of all time. And in this image, you have a very hard shadow coming across that wall. And that's a very, you know, specific thing that I bet you he probably saw multiple times and decided one day, you know what, I'm gonna go there and get this photo. In fact, he even manipulated this image without doing anything kind of crazy. And by that, I mean that person that you see in the image, it's actually someone he knew. I think it was a friend of his and he told her to go stand exactly in that spot. So he was able to take that hard shadow that he saw and then make it that much more interesting by placing a figure there. And it gives you a sense of dimension and size um, and it just makes the image that much more interesting. Without the girl there, it probably still would have been a pretty cool image because of that harsh, very clear line cutting across almost in half of that like rectangular shape. But adding that person there makes a big difference. So this is kind of a side thing to learn is that if you want to manipulate your scenes by putting people in different places, you should totally do it. You know, you can find these very interesting shadows and then move the people around you in order to incorporate them into those shadows in order to make it that much more interesting. There's nothing wrong with that. It's still street photography and it's still something that's gonna look very, very interesting. There's one more example here of this that I wanna show you and that's this particular image right here. This is another version of manipulating. However, in this case, I would assume maybe he didn't ask that person to walk into that gap in the shadow, but he clearly recognized that there was a really cool shadow with a very interesting gap in the middle and I bet you he just sat there and waited. I think some people call this fishing. And he basically sat there and waited till a person walked into the right spot at the right time. And then he snapped his image. This is something that a lot of street photographers do because oftentimes you have a really interesting scene that looks cool, but it's missing that touch. And whether that's a person or a car or you name it, having that extra thing kind of come into the photo in the right spot where you want it, it can really take a photo from being something that's cool to being something that's very, very amazing. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. He just sat around, waited for the right moment, and then boom, snapped the image. So if you're a street photographer, you should definitely be doing this kind of thing whenever you find really nice shadows that show something interesting and that you can play with as well. Hey, quick interruption. So I just wanna let you know that you should go check out my podcast. It's called the New Classic Film Photography Podcast. In that podcast, I interview photographers from all walks of life from a diverse point of view. And we've got people doing all kinds of interesting, cool things. It's available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. So go ahead and check it out. And make sure to follow us on Instagram as well, at New Classic Film. Thanks. One other thing that Fanho focused on a ton, which is very popular nowadays, is looking for lines and patterns. So in a lot of his images, you'll see that there are repeating patterns or lines that kind of guide you through the image. Oftentimes they are leading lines, but sometimes it's just interesting patterns. So let's look at a couple examples here. This right here is also one of his most famous images. And again, here you have kind of a mix of everything that he does. Of course, you've got some harsh light, you've got the interesting shadows cast by the shape of the building, and you've got a ton of lines. This is kind of Fan Ho all in one, and it's pretty cool. But specifically, I wanna draw attention to the lines here because there's so many intersecting lines here, and these are lines that you probably wouldn't notice on a day to day, but because there's that light coming through here as well, it has that extra level of lines. You've got lines from the shadows, you've got lines from the uh, handrail for the stairs, and then you've got lines from just the architecture of the building as well. All of that comes together and just gives you this ton of lines in your face that looks really cool. So when you're looking around for street photography and you're kind of looking at your scene and then looking what to photograph, you can use these lines to your advantage and anything that calls to your attention that's based on lines, probably gonna make a good photo. So you should look out for that as well. Let's look at one more example here. In this example right here, you don't have straight lines, but you still have lines. And that's the curved lines from all of the covers on the streets here. And those covers are kind of tarps, you know, so they, they do have this fold to them because of gravity and they look really cool. But he found a repeating pattern of these curved lines and that's what you see here. Otherwise, this is just the market. And, you know, of course, you've got some people that are silhouetted and it looks cool. It's a very grainy image, very, you know, it's got that cool artsy black and white thing going on. But the central matter to look at here are those curved lines. And that's what makes this image interesting. So generally, again, you can keep your eye out for any interesting set of lines that are repeating or that they guide you in a certain direction and then build your image around that. Doing that typically leads to a, a very interesting image, especially if you can then work a subject into that in a very specified way to kind of fill in the gaps in the image or just make it that much more interesting. Lines are very, very important for street photography. The last thing I wanna talk about here is about artistry. So Fan Ho was a quintessential artist. You know, he wasn't just a photographer, he had different interests and he clearly had a knack for the visual arts. So whether it was movies, which he did later in his career, and obviously photography, you know, he had a very interesting eye and always had some sort of idea behind it. 
And it's important for you as a street photographer to think about that as well. You don't have to be very rigid in how you approach street photography. You can do a lot of different mechanical things in your camera to kind of make the image that much more interesting and take it out of the usual version of street photography and make it into something more abstract per se. So Fan Ho did this, for example, via double exposures. In this example that you see here, there's a lot of interesting kind of things going on. And this one clearly is a double exposure given that you have a very clear image and then you have something a bit more faded behind it. And that's cool, you know, I don't know if this is a taste for everybody, but I guess my point is you should experiment with this and see how it can potentially change your street photography. You don't wanna just kind of put that over there in the corner and say, you know, double exposures are for landscapes only or for like really artsy abstract stuff. You can work it into your street photography and see if it yields some interesting results. Another thing that he did here is what's visible here, which is motion blur. Motion blur is a very powerful tool for street photography because you can do it in the same scene as any other kind of street photography scene. And the motion blur might actually make it that much more interesting because the way that silhouettes, for example, create something abstract and make you wonder who that person is or what that subject is, motion blur is kind of another version of that. It makes you wonder like, where's that person going? Are they moving fast? Are they moving slow? What direction are they moving in? These are all things that pop up when you start to look at an image. And in this image here, you can see that there's some people that are kind of moving around. It looks like some people might be trying to get into the bus, others might be walking away from it. You can't really tell, but again, that's kind of the visual appeal. And there's this ghostly thing to motion blur as well that I think people really, really enjoy. So I encourage you to mess around with motion blur as well. The last thing I wanna talk about here is crop. And I think cropping is a very powerful tool for street photography. And I don't think there's a right answer here, or a wrong answer, but it seems like a lot of people are on one side, which is you don't crop at all. You know, you do everything in camera and the crop of your camera is the crop that you go with. But then there's people after the fact who in post go ahead and crop, whether you do it to a scan or whether when you're printing, you choose a different crop for your image. Cropping is a very powerful tool and you can really change the dynamic of an image. So I encourage you to play with that. As you see in this image here, um, there's an interesting crop because I think it's a bit narrower than a typical image would be. This isn't like a two by three, for example, for 35 millimeter. Um, and it's obviously not like a medium format crop either. Um, but he also made this image upside down. And you know, I don't know if he flipped his camera around or he did this in post and then sold the image as this, but you know, you should play with all these things. It's another abstract kind of artist element tool that you might have to your disposal that might work for you. Um, you should just experiment. So again, this is more about pushing the boundaries of what street photography can be. And, you know, taking a route kind of a little bit different than the usual. It might not be for you at the end of the day, but I think trying is a good experiment given that you might discover something that you actually do like and you can work into your photography permanently. So those four lessons right there are things that I think anybody can learn from Fan Ho's photography. Again, he's one of the greats and he kind of created all these techniques that are extremely popular nowadays. So you kind of can get a sense for where it all came from. So tell me in the comments, which one of these is your favorite? Is there one of these particularly that you want to try in your photography in order to make it better? Let me know in the comments. I'm curious what you all have to say. All right, that's what I got for this video. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and leave me a like. And of course, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any more future videos of mine. Until the next video, y'all. Peace.